A group of congressional Democrats are joining forces in an effort to fight the far-right initiative known as Project 2025. Project 2025 is a policy plan to be enacted if Donald Trump returns to the White House. It's crafted by the right-wing think tank, the Heritage Foundation, and several former Trump administration officials. Their 920-page playbook details a mission to essentially dismantle the federal government and replace it with a radical conservative vision. Joining me now is one of the congressional leaders who helped found the Stopped Project 2025 task force, the Democratic Congresswoman Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, who's a great friend of the show. It's been too long. I'm glad to have you back here, Congresswoman. Thank you for being with us. I, I, with you. I would love to just talk to you about this, except that my colleagues over on uh, the show the weekend before me had the, uh, the president of the Heritage Foundation, Kevin Roberts, on. It was, it was a bit of a jaw-dropping interview because he said all the quiet parts out loud, which is what Project 2025 is, which is why it's so important for people to understand that. How do you, in short form, tell people who don't know or understand the danger of this thing what this 920-page document is? Uh, Project 2025 is a, a chillingly similar McCarthyism 900 plus blueprint uh, policy, not proposal. These are plans. And it's a transition plan. It calls for the replacing of dedicated civil servants with Trump loyalists. In fact, they already have an open uh, portal where they're accepting uh, applications to test people's loyalties uh, to Donald Trump. It is a dismantling of the federal government as we know it. It would cause harm to every single person that calls this country home. Uh, it would eliminate the Department of Education. It would eliminate critical Title I funding for K-12 through schools. It bans books. It bans abortion. It bans uh, words uh, like abortion, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, uh, and inclusion. And it's just been my experience in my five years in, in Congress that um, these extremists do not make threats. They make promises. And so we've established Project 2025, this task force, uh, to raise public awareness um, about this, uh, to use every congressional tool available to us from oversight and accountability uh, to ensure that this does not become a reality. And although much of the implication of Project 2025 and this uh, hateful, harmful uh, policy uh, blueprint and transition plan has focused on federal agencies, it also implicates the courts. Uh, I just want to, you know, reference that given your, your earlier uh, segment, because the Heritage Foundation and the same mega donors that have produced this are the same people that are uh, influencing Supreme Court justices like Alito and Thomas, uh, and who want to um, seat other justices like them on the bench. And so this cannot happen without the election of Donald Trump, Project 2025, and it cannot happen without the Supreme Court being enlisted as co-conspirators and accomplices, which is why, in my opinion, we need to expand the court, we need a binding and enforceable code of ethics, and investigations into any justices with a history of corruption or impropriety on the court. I think it's interesting. These extremists, as you said, do not make threats. They make uh, promises. And, and when Kevin Roberts was on with my colleagues, uh, he brought up one of the things you mentioned, this, this concept of how to deal with abortion. It's, he's not sugarcoating it. He, he says exactly what he means. Here's what the organization and the plan uh, has to say about abortion. Abortion's not health care. I find it really interesting, if, if not worse, that you wouldn't support the change of the department name to the Department of Life. I thought we were all in support of life. We believe eminently in women's rights, and particularly women's rights in the womb. And so I, the real question that you should be asking is... I just, just want to know, if I may, though, because I do ask the question, too. Why aren't we questions talking here, so about the people I just, I just who are know, supporting do you believe... legislation that abortion can happen until three days after the person's born? This is an absurd framing by this network. That is an absurd assertion. As a person with an really? actual womb, I'm telling you, that does happen. So but let me just back up. Legislators so in do, California, do you Virginia, New York, who Dr. Actually Roberts, filed do, this bill. Do, does Heritage and Project 2025 believe that a woman should be able to have an abortion if her doctor says that she needs one? This is a yes or no question. Abortion is not health care. So abortion that is, is a no? the murder of a human being. I appreciate that there's no ambiguity uh, with Project 2025, but I think what you're trying to do is get the American people, American voters, to understand there is no ambiguity. Like that answer he provided about abortion, there are 50 more answers like that about everything else that's in Project 2025.
Absolutely, and we want to make sure that people know exactly what kind of harm uh, would be caused uh, by this uh, frightening uh, blueprint uh, policy plan and transition plan. So we have to do everything possible to stop Project 2025 from being made real. Let's talk about uh, your congressman, by the way, Jamal, uh, or your colleague, the congressman Jamal Bowman, uh, who is running for re-election in New York against, against the Westchester County Executive George Latimer. He's hosting a rally in the Bronx today with Senator Bernie Sanders and with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You're going to be joining him on the campaign trail tomorrow. He's got a primary next week. Talk to me about this a little bit. What, what's going on in that primary? Well, yes, I'm, I'm hitting the ground and, and coming in to do everything possible to ensure that Jamal Bowman uh, is returned uh, to represent uh, the New York 16. Uh, Jamal Bowman was decisively uh, elected by a, a broad and uh, intersectional um, coalition. And he has represented them well in that time. Uh, this is uh, someone who is an advocate, who is an educator, uh, who is an effective legislator, uh, someone who I've gone to for partnership on everything and his leadership on everything from climate and environmental justice to fighting for clean water to ensure that things like clean water uh, and housing are not a privilege, but are a human right. Uh, I've also partnered with him on working to dismantle the school to prison pipeline to address the crisis of mental um, of mental health and, and anxiety uh, amongst our young people. Uh, he is a father of three children, and I know he sees every child as his own uh, and wants to ensure, in particular, that those two daughters that he is raising, um, that they grow up in a world where they where they don't have fewer rights um, than you know myself and 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 other women do right now, given this march towards a ban on abortion, uh, the banning of reproductive rights and justice and maternal justice. So he's an effective legislator, decisively elected. Um, he's proven. He's an advocate. He's an educator, and he champions. Um, progressive policies that are sorely needed and very popular. And that's exactly why he has earned the endorsement of. Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, amongst others. And he has the respect of this caucus, which is also why he has the endorsement of Akeem Jeffries. Is it, is it your concern that this has, th this challenge and the forces behind it have more to do with positions he's taken on the, on the war in Israel and Gaza? Jamal Bowman has taken strong progressive stances, period. And so this has made him a target for right-wing special interests who want to buy this seat and to silence him. They want to silence Jamal Bowman. They want to silence uh, the progressive movement, which only continues uh, to grow. But Jamal Bowman is someone who leads with love, who centers the people. He has been my partner in good, again, on so many issues of consequence, from child care to addressing the baby formula uh, shortage uh, during the pandemic, to fighting against the criminalization uh, desperately of black and brown students in our schools. He has proven, and I want to say this, although he is a dear friend, I did not give Jamal Bowman my endorsement. He earned it. He earned it in the same way that he was decisively uh, elected to Congress. He has earned it in word and do, in deed and what he does on behalf of the people each and every day. In freshman orientation, they told us to never forget the plot. It's easy to forget the plot in the process of legislating and governing, and the plot is the people. And Jamal Bowman has has never and will never forget the people. I want to ask you about the consequences the of the upcoming election, but we're going to take one quick break. Uh, if you just mi don't mind hanging out for me, we're going to continue this conversation on the other side. Congresswoman Ayanna Presley joins me again. Thank you for being uh, back with us, Congresswoman. My colleagues this morning on the weekend uh, also asked uh, the Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts about whether the Heritage Foundation would accept the results of the election in November. I was gobsmacked by the response. Let's listen together. Is your organization going to accept the results of the 2024 election, regardless of the outcome? Yes, if there isn't massive fraud like there was in 2020. What does that mean? If, if there isn't massive fraud. Do you believe that... There was not massive fraud. Well, yeah, where there was massive fraud. Where we have an election where fraud database that has documented that over years. By the way, the Heritage Foundation has been concerned about election integrity for decades, not just about 2020. We've been documenting this problem for a very long time. And if the, 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 one of the I believe, according to the Heritage Foundation, sir, there, um, to, by your count, Heritage Foundation has done an investigation, and according to your count, there have been 1,513 proven instances of voter fraud across the United States since 1982. Yeah, that's probably 1,500 
13. Because they're very hard to document. <laughs> and the Democrat Party is very good at fraud. I, I Anna Presley saved me. I mean, kudos to Michael Steele and, and uh, Simone Sanders for their patience in that conversation. He, he's on national TV lying. It would be uh, funny if it weren't so frightening. Uh, and again, it's more of the same. These are the same people who seek to erase history, uh, to revise and rewrite history, the same people who believe that insurrectionists uh, were just everyday tourists, uh, just uh, walking about the Capitol. Um, it is um, delusional. Yeah. And it is frightening that uh, people uh, like him, I mean, I mean, to say that they've always cared about election integrity, uh, give me a break. So, again, Project 2025, we have to do uh, everything possible in this task force to leverage every congressional tool available to uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant, to make sure that people are aware of these policy plans and this transition plan and this blueprint, which would dismantle the federal government as we know it. Every single person who calls this country home will experience harm. It is not a threat, it is a promise. Much like, as they outlined in Project 2025, that Dobbs was just the beginning. We've already seen that in real time. More dominoes have fallen. Uh, first it was Dobbs, then they went after birth control and contraceptives, then they went after IVF, then they went after Mifepristone. You know, so they will uh, enlist uh, anyone as uh, co-conspirators and accomplices in this hateful and harmful agenda. And that is exactly why uh, I am coming to New York to campaign for my colleague, uh, the effective uh, legislator, uh, Jamal Bowman, who fights for workers' rights, for housing justice, for climate justice, for a, a child care and uh, infrastructure and care economy, uh, for equitable and quality schools. Uh, this progressive movement has continued uh, to grow. Uh, this is in many ways backlash to that. I don't know if you know this, but the Congressional Progressive Caucus is currently the biggest ideological caucus in Congress. So what that says to me is that uh, progressive policies are popular and deeply resonant because they go as far and as deep as the hurt. And Jamal Bowman recognizes the hurt and that our destinies are tied, that we are one human family, from Ukraine to Gaza to Israel to Massachusetts to Haiti to the New York 16. Yeah, you're he absolutely right about humanity that. And dignity and, and you're right about the, the idea that Project 25 is a reaction because their whole section on climate change refers to those who believe in climate change, global warming as a as a woke agenda, uh, and they are going to reverse all that. I think we should just make a commitment to, be, to, to do what you said. If sunlight is the best disinfectant, talk about this Project 2025 every week so that Americans understand, those who are wavering, those who are thinking about uh, voting for Donald Trump, understand, don't be surprised if you get what they promised you. Shine a light, and we'll keep working in the meantime. Ayanna Presley, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. The Democratic Representative, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts.